Okay. Hi, y'all. I'm Robbie Herring, and I'm here for Flying Unicorn tonight. And we are going to make a canvas that I made with one of the past kits. And I have to admit, when I first got this little off-the-page item in the mail, my first thought was, that is adorable, but what do I do with it? And in case y'all have it, or I know Alda still has them in the store, I wanted y'all to see what I ended up doing with it. So let me, whoops, let's see if I can not move the camera. Let me show you, and I'm sure y'all have seen this already with the release and all, but this little bike is precious, and this is an 8 by 10 canvas. And what, it's hard to do it. There, I think you can see there. So anyway, um, this is actually a really simple project. It's a few steps. It's nothing real in-depth. So I think y'all have fun, and I know I had a lot of fun making it. And then for announcements, just a couple of things. Jen's next week. Um, I know I think there's a few more hours left that you can order from for the pre-orders for the kits. And if you haven't done that, you want to do it quickly. And if not, if you haven't, if you don't buy it right now, you better be quick because I know they go fast. So um, and then also I know we've got Unicorn Magic coming up. Yeah, I think that's the first weekend in May. Don't hold me to that. I know the girls online will tell you for sure, and I know we'll be doing some advertising, and Jen's going to do that too. So let me let me pan y'all down, and let's get started on this. Okay, don't watch. <laughs> I think I have my camera where it's not going to mess up. That was another thing last time. My camera did not want to stay put. So let's see. Give me one sec. It's uh, a little close. Let me scoot y'all up just a bit. Otherwise, I know I'll be out of camera range. And I finally got me one of these nifty Tim Holtz things that I've seen a lot of y'all use. And I'm honestly wondering why I waited so long. So if y'all don't have one of these, they are absolutely terrific. Okay, so here, this is a little easier to show you. So you can see that I used ribbon and we used some paint and, of course, the adorable metal bicycle. And then the canvas, I know a lot of people are doing this, and I just love doing this. And in fact, I seem to be a little addicted to turning these canvases upside down. I think it's a unique idea, and I think it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to set this one aside, and we're going to get started with the canvas first. I've worked ahead a little bit, um, because just because it takes a while. But as you can see, this canvas has staples. All, it did have them all the way around it. Now it just has it, the little bit that's left. So what I like to use, and now that I've been doing this a while, I have found my favorite screwdriver, and I snagged this from my husband. It's short, and then you want to pry these out. And make sure your hand's out of the way, because I beat myself up today already. So keep your hands back a little bit, and it can be a little bit tough to get underneath it, but once you do, and I've done a couple of others of these. They come out real easy. Just kind of rock it once you get up under it. Of course, naturally, now that I'm on camera, I'm not going to be able to get up under it. There we go. Oh, see, I almost did it again. I want to put my hand right here. Trust me, it's not a good idea. Whoopsie. <laughs> Although last time my hand was in the way, and I cut my hand. Should have gotten these a little bit more loose before I started, evidently. This one doesn't want to come out at all. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, now I'm bleeding on my hand, on the hand that slid. I promise it was never dangerous till today, but naturally because I'm doing a show, which isn't, which doesn't say much considering the luck I had last time on the show. Let's hope things get better from here. Okay, so there we go. Pretty easy, and obviously throw those away. Give me one sec. And obviously, I do not have a band aid in here. All right, so. That's what we've got. We've pulled it out. <laughs> I'm trying to be careful. All right. And then what you want to do is you want to keep this to where it's fairly tight. So when you pull it back, you're going to use some Fabri-Tac. 
And what you want to do is to, so you can see here where I can still open it and manipulate it. And that way I can distress this a little bit. Let's see if I can scoot it back a bit. Uh, you, you want to glue right down in here. And pull it back and make sure you get the glue. If you get some on top, it's not a big deal. But as y'all are aware, if you've tried this, and I'm sure most of you have tried Fabri-Tac by now, it grabs pretty quickly. Uh-oh. Sorry. I think I may have to, I may have to grab a Band-Aid. We'll see. Let's see if it'll stop now. <laughs> I bet y'all haven't watched a show where you're, the person on it was bleeding. Okay. So, and then what I did was I took, I wanted to make sure this was distressed. And you can see right here, just to start, I just snipped it in all these places. And so these I want to snip too, because I want to be able to turn these back a bit and ink them and, you know, just kind of open them up to where they've got a little more interest than just being flat. Because if, if we wanted it to stay flat, we could just leave the staples in because you can easily cover those. Y'all bear with me one sec. No. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it takes the cake. I know, but it's not, I couldn't yell at my husband online. So I decided it'd be quicker to grab it by myself real quick. Give me one second, y'all. Okay. All right. <laughs> Back to the show. All right. So what I was saying was, is that we want to make sure that all these little edges are snipped so they can open up and we can manipulate them. Okay. So there, it's just that simple. And see, now we can do this. <laughs> okay. Now the other thing that you can do, you can either just ink it or... Because burlap will fray pretty easily, and one thing about the burlap canvases, they don't fray as easily as a regular burlap because they are treated, um, I'm, I'm not sure with what, but you can take a seam ripper, and I don't know if you sew, you definitely have one of these, and you can just make some, some little cuts in it, and as we work with it, of course, we can always add more. So I'm just going to make some quick little cuts in this going around it and that'll help to make it fray and, and distress a bit as we're going need to not read the chat and watch what I'm doing I'm already bleeding right and you can see I'm just doing this real quick not spending any time on it if you wanted to go slower and see, like this, sometimes if you get them, you can just grab them and pull them back, and you can even get the, the neat little threads hanging. And this will work with your regular canvases, too. It is an 8 by 10 canvas. <laughs> yeah, it makes you wonder why you did your nails if you have to wear a Band-Aid, right? And I'll tell you, it kind of makes your hands slick, but it beats bleeding on camera, right? Or bleeding where you can see it on camera. <laughs> all right. Okay, so that is all there is to the start. And I'm not going to ink it now. I'm going to ink it later after we do some painting and do some whitewashing. So the first thing I did is I just took some cream-colored paint and added a bit of water and I whitewashed this and it's I say whitewashed it is cream so it's not like a true whitewash but I want to leave a little bit of the wood, wood grain showing behind it so I like to as y'all know paper plates but have these nifty ones left over from a party and they work really well because they don't and this is it's still white but it's an older brush so it's a little bit stiff which is neither here nor there but this you don't need to use you don't need anything fancy it's whatever you have 
that's used new doesn't matter. And I'm just giving this a bit of a color wash. You could obviously do any colors you wanted. And I'm making sure, I'm not going to pull this all the way back, but I am making sure that I get up under it so that I don't have any wonky lines there at the end when I start moving this back. So just make sure you get up under there a little bit. Didn't get enough paint either. Usually I get too much. It's usually the opposite. And the other thing you need to do is make sure that, you know, you get up on the sides and just cover all the wood pieces. And I'm not adding, this paint that I'm using is pretty thin, so I'm not really adding much water, but just enough to make sure that it's not doing like a full coverage. Because my idea is not to get rid of the, uh, the look of the wood. And the other thing is, too, just a little tip, if you get to where you've got too much and you feel like your coverage, this is acrylic paint. And if you use acrylic for this and you feel like you want to lighten it down a bit or it's too heavy, you can always give it a quick mist. I'll show you because this I didn't put as much water in this one. I don't know if you can really see, but you can give it a quick mist and, and it'll make it move a little better and it'll also bring some of that back, some of the wood back where it'll show. Um, let's see, not here. And you'll notice I'm not being careful not to get it in on the canvas because I'm going to put a little on the canvas to give it a little bit of that color pulled down in there. All right, now I did go in here, and this is a good example of the water. I'm going to put a little bit of color just around. And like I said, this is treated, which you can kind of see because a natural burlap will suck this paint up even more. This is sucking it up a bit, but not a whole bunch. All right, and then I want to move it around a bit. So give it a, got a little bit there. Give it a little bit here, and you can pull it down and soften it because I want some of the burlap. And then I want to okay, let me pull it up here so you can see. I don't know how well y'all can see. And I actually got a little much. And like I said, this is the beauty of acrylic. You can dab some off, and that gives you a little bit of a model. So see? Real easy. And then I'm also, this, this group, this one is a little bit heavy. So I'm also going to add just some of this cream here and there around. No rhyme or reason. Just put you a little bit on here. Um, because you could frame something like this, but... Really, I would probably set it in a stand, and this way, whatever you're doing is repeated and pulled across the rest of the project. So the edges, you know, still fit in. They're not all neat and perfect while you've got your distressed and your color everywhere else. So there you go. That is it. That's our first coat. We'll add a little bit there. All right. Now, I'm going to dry this a bit, and then we're going to move on. It is a burlap canvas and it is an 8 by 10. I'm reading, trying to see. I'd come help too if I lived nearby. It's, it's a lot different when you pack someone else and as, as when you pack yourself. Okay. This doesn't have to get totally dry for what we're doing. I just didn't want it to be really wet. Okay, so next thing is we're going to use some modeling paste. And let's see, here it is. Okay, and I try to keep my stencils fairly clean, but I'm the first to admit that this is my worst thing. I tend to throw them in a sink and then get back to them. This one, I happen to be busy and 
forgot and just left it laying on the table. And let me tell y'all, if you use gel medium, get it off quick because once it sets, it's really set. But even though it's ugly, it still works. And the other thing to let y'all know, I'm, I'm really bad when I want to come in here and this is where we're going to put this. Sometimes the edges, I'll cut. So I have trimmed. This one you can see is the regular size. And this is a little bit less. So I'm not above trimming it whenever I want to put it in, in tricky spots. Just make sure if you do this that you don't trim off the detail. You still want to stay outside of the uh, outside of the, I don't know what you'd call that, the design. Nope, it's going to be that day. Oh, there it is. I was going, I thought I forgot a tool. All right, it's not. <laughs> okay, and this is the uh, 13 Arts modeling paste that I'm going to use tonight. If I can get it out. Okay, and this, we're just giving, it doesn't have to be perfect. And let me show you all this too. If you look here, you can see that this, when I moved it, I moved it to the side and I was okay with that. So if you if you want to tuck it up under and and not have a really uh, really crisp design, that's fine. If you want to keep it real crisp, trim it down. Um, either way works. There's it there it's just really your preference because this is for one, not a lot of it's gonna show. It's more of just a background thing. And for number two, there it's there's no right or wrong way with this. And see, whoops, I should have stirred this a bit. But this one is a little bit smeared. It's a little bit damp. It's probably because my background is, uh, it's probably a little bit damp because my background is still a little bit damp. Okay. All right, so that is it. Set all this aside. That is all the modeling paste I did. Just a little bit, and just only in the back where we're gonna we're gonna build our design around this. Okay. Let me dry this a bit. This one is gonna have to be a little bit dried. It could be quite a mess if I started working on top of it. It, it is a stencil. I, I wish I could remember. It's on the supply list, the name of it. I have the hardest time remembering, but it is one that came from the kit. Um, so if you get the kit, you probably already have it, which is nice. Um, and if you don't, if you don't have this particular one, really any one will work. And all the always includes, a, you know, some of these in there. I say always. I think always actually includes a stencil or something fun to add texture in the kit. So you could use anything. This just happened to be the one I got and I loved it. That dried fast. I think that's dry enough to move on. Okay. Now next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, we're gonna start we're still since I've got the paint out we're gonna go ahead and do a few things with the paint. Um, First one we're going to do is, I've already pre-done the ribbon, and if you've watched me before, you've seen me do this. It's it's not something that I don't do. I do it pretty often. Um, pretty sure I did something similar on the birdhouse kit. And so here's what we're going for, is the crinkled ribbon again. And that's what I have tucked in and about and around. And so I'm going to show y'all how I do it. Let me get the bigger plate. Um, and then I'm going to set it aside because, like I said, I've, I've worked ahead because that would be taking a while. And just for the sake of neatness, I usually, I've been doing this since I got this right on top of this thing. But this can be a bit messy, so I decided I was going to do it on a plate tonight to make it a bit easier and a bit cleaner so we can get rid of the, the mess. Okay, and what I did was... I added water to it, and this, I don't want it heavy, so you're going to, and I should have got a water bottle too, you're going to add quite a bit of water, and we're going to mix it up, 
until it's basically nothing more than water with some color. So you can see by how it moves. This is very, very wet. All right, let me get the ribbon. So this is typical bow. And let me show you how, how I actually, I left the edges of these long, but I kept the bow fairly small. I didn't want any great big loops. Here we go. And I sure got a lot of paint to show y'all one ribbon, but there you go. And then all you're going to do is you're going to give it a mist of water and start the crinkle project. And this is way too much paint. Here, let me get it. Since we're only doing one, I'm just going to pour a little bit of it on this because this will... I, I want to show you. Okay, so you're not using a bunch. Um, I use... Here's all my ribbons. I, I don't know how many I use, but I, I did a bunch. So a plate, that much paint would have probably worked for that for that one. But I don't want it to be a full coverage. I want it to still be somewhat light. And so that is all I do. And I wad it up for all intents and purposes. And I let it dry. So basically, and I'll tell you, I think I've told you all this before. I'm not above stick it in the oven. So, but if you do, keep it on a real low temp. <laughs> so that is it. And then you just let it dry. Oh, and yes, I'm sorry. I didn't say what it was. It is. It's Hug Snug Seam Binding. And um, it's 100% rayon. So you could definitely use other rayon ribbons. They crinkle well. But that is it. So if you do that and let it dry, that's the ribbon. Let me move some stuff out of the way. Like I said, this is not a hard project at all, but it does have a few steps. Okay, next up, we need the chipboard. And here's this adorable little bicycle. And it comes already kind of rusty looking. Um, it's not rusty. It's painted, but it looks a little rusty when you look at it. But for this project, I wanted it to be more of the, add more of the creamy, because I really was going for a monochromatic look. So that is another thing. I just took a sponge. Get a little bit of paint that's not watered down. And I love these sponges. And if you buy them big, you can cut some pieces off. And that's what I usually do. I'll just buy a big one or whatever's inexpensive and just cut off the pieces I need. And this, I just dabbed paint on until I liked the look. Again, it's, it's all about what your personal taste is. Now, this would not stick if you were like handling it all the time, but it sticks great for an, you know, an art piece or a project that is, is not going to be handled. And I went ahead and did a little bit on the back just to make sure that the whole back was not brown. And you might want to move. I think this is cute. These even move. So don't do this if you just want to roll it around because it probably won't, but this paint probably won't stand the test of time because it's acrylic on metal. But so that is all very cute. All right. So that's it with the sponge. And then this is definitely a, a project I need some gloves, I think. I'm getting a little messy. So let me get that off. And then the other thing that we want to paint before we move on from the paint is the chipboard. And I used a different chipboard that was no longer in stock, but you can use any chipboard. And so this one I chose, I thought this, this one from Creative Embellishments would be really pretty and make a nice touch to, to add a different texture to it. And I'm going to do the whole piece at once. And actually, I'm going to use that same sponge. And um, I'm going to do the whole thing at once. And this again, I'm just adding some color. Now down the road as we're working, we're going to cut it up. I need, I need my paint thick. Um, the ones on the original project are also, it was one piece of chipboard that I just cut apart and gave myself, you know, lots of little pieces to tuck in. So it doesn't cost much to do it that way. And there we go. That's it. I'm, I didn't cover it completely. I didn't on the other one. The other one I might have covered a little more. We'll add a bit more. But 
you, you don't need full coverage. Again, this is just to give it a hint, and I like it being mixed up, and we'll add some ink to it as after, after a while as we go. Okay, so that is the next thing. And then one more technique before we start actually building this. I'm telling y'all, this is an easy one. <laughs> if y'all have questions, ask me. While I'm doing stuff, I'm trying to uh, keep an eye on the, the chat. I can't truly read it as I go, but I can a bit. Okay, last thing was the leaves, and I want to show y'all what I did. Uh, this is another thing that, just to make sure they were dry, I did ahead. Um, burlap can fray and you can even see here how easy so for those of you who haven't worked with it, it it'll fray very easily and so when you're cutting small pieces you'll you'll find that they may fall apart and you almost have nothing left by the time it's quit the fraying and because I was doing leaves uh, they are they're pretty small so I knew if I had all this fraying I might not have any leaf left and I wanted these to hold their shape a bit so I had a brainstorm and it worked and what I did was I took some soft soft matte gel. This was a brainstorm today because I was out of the stuff I used originally. And I, I took my, uh, my thing that I use on my stencil, my craft knife, which may still have a little bit of gel medium on it. And all I did was I just put a light coat over the top. You could probably do this with a glue or whatever, but I put a light coat and see, and I dried it, but if you see on the back, you still have a little bit of the glue coming through, but not much. And so you still have the look of the burlap, and it holds it tight to where you don't lose your shape on things that you want to cut. Oh, my camera's not liking that. I see it's moving in and out. Okay, so that is all I did with that, but I have a piece that is already done, so I can show you. So this one, if I don't even really think on the camera, if you can maybe see there's a bit of a sheen on it, but it, it really worked great. So if you're going to do it, I would say use the gel medium if you have it, because it did work. Okay, for the leaves, I didn't worry about size. I didn't worry really about true shape. I just freehand cut them. And just tried to do a couple of different sizes. You can see here where it came to the thing. I'll just take advantage of that and go ahead and just use it. So you can see there are different sizes. And then I gave it a little fold. Let me get up here where you can see. Just like that. But what I did was I put a tiny bit of Fabri-Tac in the, in the fold. And then held it till it till it glued. And if uh, and if you if you're doing a bunch like I was, I have some of those little tiny clothespins, and I just let it clip. But this is why I did on my head because they take this because it's burlap and it's pretty stiff with the uh, the gel medium on it. They're not going to grab quite as hold as mo as grab hold quite as quickly as most things. So that was it. And let me show you one more just so you know. Oh, let me give it the fold so I have it. This is a smaller one, but it still works the same. Just give it a fold, and you have little leaves. So super, super quick and easy. No fuss way to get some leaves made out of burlap. So here I have them. And these are the ones, I don't even know if this is many. I, I kept thinking, you need to count, but I thought, this is plenty, probably too many. So you can see that this is how that camera doesn't want to stay focused. If it gets really bad, someone text me and tell me. But you can see every one of these just has that little fold. Because I, I think I can turn off the autofocus, which might help a bit. Okay, now we're going to start building. That is really all it takes. What's the wrong thing? <laughs> that is really all it takes to get started with this. And so what I did first was, and on the on the one, I spent some time, I did it just like I showed you, but if you want to keep uh, getting this more and more distressed, you can. For the sake of the show, I'm not going to distress it as much, 
as I probably would have if, you know, if I had 20 minutes or 10, I say that, that was an exaggeration, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes to like really play. Oh, this is a Prima Resin Chalk Inker and it's knotted wood. This is my favorite. I don't know why, but this color of brown really appeals to me. And again, this is a mu as much or as little as you like. I tend to like it to have color, but not be really overly brown whenever I'm distressing. Um, and here's another kind of neat thing with water. Just another tip while we're at it. And I'm totally fine with this, but you can also give things, oh, I don't have a brush. That, yeah, I do. Uh, you can also give things like this a mist. And you can disperse that color a bit too. So the these these will be pretty stable once they're dry. But in the process, you've got some time to work with these inks too, which I like. And this part where I did this, I want to make sure I get it up and make it neat. And I don't mean neat in a traditional. I mean neat as in cool. <laughs> it is knotted wood. Okay. So that is the base. The other thing is I inked, and I should have done some of these ahead, I inked these leaves as well. You can see. And you can even give them a bit of an ink where that fold is. So if that fold shows, it gives you a little bit of shadow, which is nice. And I know y'all can't see online, but you here, when, when if you do this, you can see which side is, you actually can kind of see. See how that's a little bit white from the medium? But the other side still is a really nice burlap look. I have to say, who would have ever thought that burlap would be something we all enjoy instead of like the not nice fabric? I don't know how to really explain what I'm saying, but it's, it's funny how much, how popular it has gotten. I would have never guessed it would be something I love so much. Yep, should have done these. These take a little longer than I thought. <laughs> See, I just finished walking the dog. My husband's home tonight, so I have somebody to take care of the dogs. The last show, they were all three underfoot. Today, just the old ones in here. And sadly, she is almost deaf, but she's sweet and she sits with me. <laughs> she's the only one that's allowed to be in here whenever he's home and I'm on, on the show because she doesn't make noise. And I bet my mother-in-law's watching, so I'm talking about your baby. Oh, I didn't say pinch, but well, maybe I did. Did I say pinch? <laughs> Can't remember. I guess maybe I didn't. Maybe I said it correctly today. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Didn't think that was going to take us long. Okay. Now, let's see what we got here. See, can you hear the loud one in the background barking? Okay, let's see. I just used a couple of these. All right, I'm sorry, I didn't show y'all first. These are the Petaloo, and y'all know I love these. Uh, they're just really neat, and they're, they're canvas and this net, netted stuff, and you could use anything like this. I know they make some others. I know Prima makes some. Uh, these are just great. They're off-white. And what I did, um, and then I also used the small ones, what are these called? Textured elements um, and the butterfly. And so I went ahead and I gave all of them just a touch of ink as well. can't remember what I used. have to look at it for a sec. I think I used these. 
I'm not sure how many of the littles. And the other thing too is this one will be similar, but it may not be perfectly the same as the other. And that is okay because this really is just kind of one of those projects you need to go with. And this, I gave it a little mist, add a little ink. And again, we're just going for that monochromatic look. And I like to give the flowers, even the paper flowers, a bit of a mist. It just keeps, whether you're using the ink or the color blooms or whatever, it just keeps the uh, color a little softer and doesn't give you, helps you keep from getting some hard edge from your ink pad or your paintbrush or whatever. This is why I love this mat because I can even just do it right here. I'm telling y'all, if you don't have one of these, you need one. I thought there was five, but I may have left it in the package. Or dropped it on the floor, too. You never can tell. You can see, I'm wondering, I think I'm moving. I don't think the camera's moving. If the camera's moving, sorry about that, y'all. Oh, I didn't get any water on that. I can't, I can't even feel it. Like there's the fifth one. It's probably laying there the whole time and I just disappeared on me. Okay. All right. And then the other thing is, is adding a touch of inking to the chipboard. Let's see, make sure I get it. And this is just to bring this color in. I left some of it brown, so I'm just going to, I'm not even going to run it along. I'm just going to kind of hit some of those spots. Let me show you what we end up with. Lots of paint on me. Okay. And then uh, the bikes, bicycle as well which we have to have it to have a project because that's the whole point. <laughs> and again, I just gave it a little bit of the ink on the places on the handlebar and maybe on the basket, any place where it's looking a little rough, which I wanted a bit rough, so it doesn't really matter, but just to make sure that I've got all the same colors kind of pulled across. All right, now we are ready to build. And so I started out with the ribbon. I said we'll start ready to build. we got to do some ribbon, too. Um, I also put some ink on the ribbon. Let me show you here because I think you can see here. Maybe not. Doesn't want to. There we go. But you can see, I, instead of just leaving it totally cream, I added a bit of that to the ribbon. You know, I really thought this was going to be a much faster class. And it's taking a little longer than I thought. And this is no perfection. Again, just getting some ink on the pieces. And I'm just, I don't know how many I'm going to need, so we're going to use them. And then what I did was I started out, and I want to put ribbon inside, or outside and inside. So I'm not even going to really pay attention. I'm going to give some, well, we'll pay attention, but there's not going to be any perfection here again. And so I'm giving myself a glue base. And then this is an eyeball type thing. You eyeball it till you like it. And the bow here, you can see it's very crinkled, like I, whoops, very crinkled, like I said. And I'm just going to stick it in the corner. And then I want this to be rough and crinkled and gathered together. And I don't want it to be perfect. And if the edge sticks out, dab a bit more glue there. To hold this ribbon, it's very lightweight if you haven't used it, so it honestly takes very little glue. So even the places I missed, I'm not truly gluing every piece down. I just want enough of glue for it to catch. And... And the other thing is, too, is that once I get going, if after I put the flowers, if I don't like or I need more or less, less I can snip off, more I can add. So this one, I want to have some up here because this is we're going to build the flower clusters in the corners. So I want to make sure I have a little bit up here. Let me get 
again. I'm going to pop it down. And if you get like this, this is an example of another little tip you can do where it's all kind of gathered too tight and this is kind of the loop and when I build that flower I might want this to show if you give this a real light mist it takes a while for it to dry if you do it with, you know during the original technique because you've gotten it very wet but if you give it a light mist barely you can open up the loops and you can do some shaping with this ribbon um, and open it back up even though it's paint it's not truly stuck and this let's see I'm going to do this over here a bit because I want some of it to show. And then I also want some pieces inside. So I'm going to add a bit. And you can go directly on the thing too and then add. And in this case, because I'm going to tuck it up under here, this will also give me some uh, something to build the flower cluster on. So it'll I can tuck some under if I need it to help me with the height. Um, or I can smush it down and scoot it out of the way. Um, it'll kind of help you build there. Okay, and we'll be we'll be arranging that and playing with it as we go as needed. Um, actually, let's see. I want this one short. And then, whoops, that wasn't smart. Pull it right off. Tuck it back in there. Okay. Let's get a little bit there. Okay. And then we're going to give some at the bottom. This one I'm going to put a little bit here too. Same technique, some down here. And I'm going to have some left over to, to add here and there. You can cut it in pieces or just go all you know use the big piece if you need it but all these little pieces are that's a whole ribbon are nice to have hanging around if you want to add in later This glue is almost new and it's already kind of giving me trouble getting out. And I'm not going to trim this yet, but I probably will down the road. But for right now, I'm going to leave it. Actually, let's gather that up. See what I mean about how if you're not feeling it, you can gather it up a little bit more. And then one more. Oh, got the ink. This one, let's see. Again, some of these will get trimmed. I'm not going to right now because I'm not sure how much of it I'll want. I'm having a little trouble getting these to stick to the deal, not my fingers.
Now this side I am going to trim because the bicycle is going to be on top of it and I know I don't want it really long. So that you can see is very easy, very quick, and that's the base that we're going to start working with. Okay, now we're going to add the bike. And what I chose to do, and the reason I chose it, and I think y'all can see well enough, is I chose to do, put it here. I liked the placement of it, and it allowed me not to bend it. Um, I did bend it originally, and I did pull it apart. So whatever you decide, if you want to change it up, one thing I'd be sure is not to manipulate this a lot, because it's a pretty tough little thing, but it is it is thin, you know, metal. It's not something that's industrial strength. So be a little, be a little bit careful with it. And this, both of these are going to stick for sure. They're both places that are going to be touching. Whoops, got a little string. And I just made sure to tuck it up in here. And I, I did that also knowing that with it, to get quite far enough down there. But also, um, the wood here is tough, so it's going to help hold it in place over time. And then this burlap, of course, will help. And you can even tuck a bit here if you want to make sure. Once you get it placed, just tuck a bit of glue underneath because you're folding this up over. And then also, you're going to be putting your flowers here, and they're going to be glued right on top as well. So you're going to have several little things that are that are helping you to hold this. And although I tucked it under here, I have it out here. I mean, yeah, out here so you can see the detail of it. And you can keep pulling this stuff back. All right. Now, I think my camera is moving. Let me move y'all up just a bit so that I can have the whole thing in the picture while we're building it. There we go. Okay. Now, these are these flowers. And I like to do the flowers first and then decide on my leaf placement. And I'm just going to basically follow what I did before to keep it easy. And these are going to go here. And obviously, I'm not sticking these real well till I get both of them done. And I want these in the corner. And I want this ribbon kind of available. So I'm going to pull it back a bit. And I'll have to hold these just a little while. And while I'm letting those dry, I'm pulling that to where I can see it a bit. And that should be stuck. Give it just a sec more to stick. And the same thing with these pieces. We're, I'm going to cut these apart and kind of add them in once I get the bigger flowers. I don't like that too much. Once I get the bigger flowers placed. And down here, I started with just two flowers at the bottom. And I think, I think I'm going to stay outside. Now again, I'm wanting to make sure you can see some of the bicycle. So I don't want to totally, yep, like these still outside. thought I would try it inside this time, but still like it outside. Uh-oh. Pull that back. Getting a little. Okay, so that's the base, and then tuck in some of these leaves. And this is just kind of your own personal preference, and I want that a little shorter. So this one is kind of where you like your leaves and how you like your clusters. I I notice you know, when I'm looking around at other people's work that everybody has their favorite way. For some reason, I always want to put at least two and almost always two leaves per flower and don't know why that is. It just seems that that's the way I end up liking when I go, okay, that looks good. That's enough. I'm, I'm happy with that. And as you can see, some of these are a little bigger, some of them are a little smaller. I am, for these giant flowers, picking a couple of the little bit larger leaves. Okay, and I think I'm going to add another one up here. 
let's see, let's put it back here yeah, behind a bit. Yeah, that'll tuck in. And I'm pulling my ribbon out so I can still have my ribbon. This one wants to fold up on me. Let's see if we can get it a little better. There we go. Okay, let me bring you up a little closer so you can see well. So that is all I did there. And I can see here when I'm looking, you might want to put a little bit of ink here. Same, same concept that I didn't get, but I just noticed it. Whenever I looked on the camera at the placement, I could see I had big white spots because I didn't put any here. So the ink, you can keep adding to make it look the way you want. And now I'm going to cut up these pieces because I want to, it's not going to be the same flourishes I look, used, but I'm going to cut off a bit. And this one, I've already bent it by being a little rough with it. And that way we have some chipboard pieces to tuck in here and there. And I think I'm going to save this one. I think this one will be pretty with my butterfly. I used to flourish last time for the butterfly. This time I think we'll do a little flower coming up so that it can have a little place to, to light on. Is that what you call it? So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then let's tuck in. Let's see. How about here? And I think I'm going to... At least I'm not humming. Usually when I'm doing stuff like this, I end up humming. So I always worry that I'm going to hum online. I actually, I'm going to cut this apart a bit more. It's a little big. And I want to be able to use both. So I'm going to be a little careful about cutting this apart. Because I want to I want to leave myself these pretty pieces in case I want them. Okay. Now. See, yeah, I've still got some glue. I've touched it, so I wanted to make sure I still had some glue available. And then, like I said, these are great because you can just keep cutting them apart. I'm going to trim this up a bit because I think I'm going to lay it kind of on top. Let's do this here. Actually, let's get it where it scoots out a bit and get my ribbon on top. Okay, and then let's do this one. I think I'm going to cut this one apart a bit too. Yeah. Have to decide where. But you see what I'm saying that it doesn't matter which chipboard you purchase. Um, just purchase one that has you some room to work with. Let's see because these creative embellishment ones are great size to give you lots of different little pieces to work with. And this one I think I'm going to put down here. And then let's see, I've got two pieces. How about one up here where I, I just looked at my deal and I did put one up here high, but I think this one, I think I'm going to, actually I did one high and one low if I pay attention. So let's put this one tucked in here. And then let's put this one up on top. So you can see that the main thing is, is I've carried the design that I did the wrong side. I need to change that up. I carried the design and continue to do things that are high and low so that the whole thing is pulled together and cohesive. All right. And then uh, let's, we've got to do some leaves on the bottom. Need to move that. Yeah, I did not have any idea. I'm sorry, y'all. I thought this would go much quicker. Tuck these in, but we are, except for the words, we're almost done. And I'm going to speed it up. But although it has taken a little while, y'all can see that all the individual steps of this are actually really, really easy. And that one I covered up, which is so pretty. I don't want it totally covered. I want to be able to see it. And I don't like that leaf. I like a smaller one here. And this bottom part, 
I'm kind of being aware of if it, to not get anything too low because you want to leave a place for if you want to put it in a stand or something to hold it. And then let's do a couple of these little ones and then we'll do the, the wood pieces and the letters. That's all we got going. Let's do our butterfly. And the butterfly is ready to go as is. We've already inked it, just as a little reminder. Get him there. And then where this one kind of just cuts off, I'm going to pop a flower there. And then tuck in a few more. Let's see, how about right there? And basically when I do this, I'm, these little flowers, when I add them as the details at this point, usually I'm just kind of looking for any place where I feel like it's kind of bare or kind of a spot where, you know, it, it fills in as the overall look. Because these nice little flowers are nice to tuck in here and there and, and just add a little bit more detail. I think... I think I want to continue up here, and then I do know that I want some ribbon down here, and then we'll do letters. Actually, now one more little thing, because I'm going to show you one more little thing I have. We'll add them real quick. Okay, and I want to add a little bit of ribbon here to the bottom, and I want to kind of tuck it. Actually, I think I want to go in here. Like I said, I'm not wanting to cover too much of the bicycle, so this is the perfect place to trim a bit. And just give us, yeah, I'm not liking that too much. There we go. Needs to go underneath that. Okay. And then, and like I said, you can always add more or less. It's totally your preference. Okay, I'm getting messy again. When I get in a rush, I get messy. Uh, last little embellishment I used are these little wood things from Teresa Collins. And I came across these, and they're just little wood pieces. And I'm not, well, actually I can. And what I did with them was I just inked a few, same, same thing, just gave a little bit of ink, and I just tucked them around. And every time I do this, I think of Delena with her scissors and how she gets everything off with her scissors. And I was determined that I was going to do that. It made so much sense. It looks so easy. I cannot do it like she does. It's just impossible for me. And these are just, whoops, just tucking here and there, or just scattering here and there. You can tuck them in. You can put one in your flower if you want to pull it there. Again, it's personal choice. And I like, and I'm seeing here too, that I didn't really give any ink to my wood. And I'm not, that's another little detail that you may want to add, is as you go, add a little ink here and there. But it's just keeping playing with it till you have an overall look that you like. Let's put one. Oops, let's do the one I inked. Don't like that one. How about right here? Now, for the project that I did, not online, I did, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to glue these down tonight, but the, the one I did, I did glue them down. Yes, they're sticky, but for this type of thing, they are not going to stay long term without a bit of glue. So grab your Fabri-Tac and add just a, a coat of that on it real quick. And then these are the alphabets I used. Okay, I hope you all bear with me. I'm a little behind. So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and finish up and show you all what I did. These are old Little Yellow Bicycle. I'm sure most of you know that I used to design for them. And they don't, I don't think these are out anymore. But you could use any canvas, uh, any canvas letters you want. Because I designed for them, I just happen to have a bunch of these. So these, are, and I do love them. But these are what I used. And <coughs> And quite often, because I'm pretty picky about making sure that everything is straight. So what I'll do, and I'm not going to cut all these out. I'm going to spare you that. But what I'll usually do for placement is I will cut them out on the plastic and place everything. Make sure I like it. It's a nice way to like find out what you like before you commit. And uh, 
But today, we're not going to do that because I don't need to because I know where I want them. Um, but that, if you're, if you're one of those that you get frustrated when you stick it down and you don't like it, that's a neat way to do it to where you don't end up messing up or wasting your product. You can still, you know, you can move it or you can change your mind and just stick it back in the pay in the package. It's all good. And I decided to do enjoy the rod, and I'm going to do that again. And instead of using all uppercase, except I can't spell tonight, um, instead of using all uppercase, um, I decided to mix it. And I like that too, and I like titles that are... Uh, that are mixed up or that are overlapping a bit. Lots of neat ideas out there. There's some girls online, if you look, that are just like really fabulous at title work and thinking of good titles too, which is a whole nother story about a great gift. These are Prima Engraver Alphabet stickers. All that had these in the store, I think they're probably still there. And I added those in as well. And I'm not even going to pull those off till we get here. But I did the same thing for the alphabet stickers that I did for everything else. I'm going to grab it. This is the paint that I used. And just to keep them from being real stark, because they're sitting on white, I wanted them. That camera is moving totally. It is time to invest in a new holder. Hang on. Okay. This way. Um... I lost my train of thought. Anyway, oh, because they're sitting on a, a white background, I wanted them to have a little bit of the cream color. And then the same thing, I took a little bit of the ink and just dabbed them and gave them a tiny bit of color. And I will admit freely to y'all that if we were not on the camera, I have my little ruler, I would be making sure they're lined up. But I'm going to eyeball it tonight, so hopefully I got it. And these are another thing that they're pretty sticky, but if you want them to stand the test of time, I would certainly put a little bit of Fabri-Tac on them on the back. And something too, you can probably see here, when I do that, I just put it somewhere where it holds. You can see that even on the original, I'm not holding the whole thing down because I like if it pops up a bit on this type of project. It doesn't bother me a bit if, uh, if the whole thing is not truly glued. To me, that's just a character thing. It looks good. I missed that with my ink. Hang on one sec. Okay, y'all would laugh if y'all could see me because I'm trying to watch the camera to place these. <laughs> and these, uh, these I also gave um, a little bit. They're, they were a little off in color. They kind of stood out too much. So I did give these a tiny bit of touch with a paintbrush. Whoops. And another thing about the title, and these definitely have to have some glue as well. But you can take a paintbrush and just basically touch them. In fact, they're disappearing on the camera. Uh, you can't really see them at all. But I'll bring it up close. And as you know, this is this is uh, on the on the Facebook. It's on the Flying Unicorn site, and I will repost it with my, on my blog uh, this week, so y'all can be sure that you can see any of the details that you might not be able to see from further back on camera. Okay. Whoops. Um, and you can see by the fact that the Y moved that. You really do need to add a touch of glue to anything. This, these are made to stick to paper, all of these, not to a burlap thing. Yeah, because I'm afraid if I stick my head in here to really see where they are, that I'll have the back of my head on camera instead of the project. So I'm trying to look at the... Computer screen. Okay, I think I may have got these a little too wet because they're not really sticking. There we go. I think that grabbed. Felt like it is. So there you go. Oops. Definitely. Definitely have to have some glue. Especially for the long term. Okay, let me move this out of the way and show you. So, this was quick and easy. And when I'm looking, I've lost my little flower. I know there's another one around here somewhere. So, um, 
because I don't, I'm going to take one more minute and just show y'all that, like here where there's a dead space, if you don't like it, take these little bits and pieces. And what I'll do is I'll put a little glue, make myself a little loop, snip it real quick. That's what I said about these being great. And then add a bit more glue. And these nonstick scissors are great for this. And just tuck it in. And you'll lose those little ends, but you'll give yourself a little more dimension, a little more detail for the spots that may feel a little like they're, they're bare. But you can see that that is really it, y'all. It's truly that fast and simple. And I, I'm definitely going to glue these down. And another thing is, this would be so easy to add color to. Just by using a different color of ink or a different color of paint, the ideas are pretty much endless with this one because you're adding any color that you used. Okay, let me scroll. I'm trying to find a place to put everything. Let me move the camera so hang tight so y'all can see. Or so y'all don't get sick. I know you haven't seen. All right, well, except for bleeding. Today went a little better. I didn't spill stuff everywhere. It's <laughs> still not quite smooth. And obviously, I'm going to have to get a new thing to hold my camera because that's the second time that it hasn't wanted to hold tight. But thanks so much for being here. I really look forward to these when I do them. And I, I truly appreciate y'all being here. So um, thank you again for coming. And I'm going to stop the record. And don't forget to watch Jen ne Jennifer next week. And also, don't forget Flying Unicorn Magic, Uni Magic coming up. And watch Facebook for that. Thanks so much, y'all. Good night.